what's up, Scrappy peeps? It's Adele from Inky Quill. Happy New Year. Welcome back. This is my first video for 2019. That's going to get, that's going to take some getting used to. Boy, oh boy. I can't believe we're almost in the 20s. That's, ah, oh, nope, 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 nope. Uh, so today I want to talk about busy pattern paper backgrounds because I I have some trouble with them. I really do. Um, so this is, you can see I'm using some papers that I've just got from my stash, a few citrus twist bits and pieces that I've got in the December kit I'm trying to use up. Um, but this clock paper in the Willow Lane collection, there were a lot of busy patterns and I've noticed that recently with a lot of the crepe paper collections there's a lot of very busy ones and I often struggle with them especially the multicolored ones so this clock was quite a bit busier than I was used to how many times can I say busy in this video uh, but I, I do struggle with them a bit and I definitely wouldn't really know how to use them as a full background so I think a way to work around them if you're also having trouble with them is to rip them up and use little sections so you could either do it behind um, photos like a little bit of layering or here I'm trying to make it as a focal element at the top of my page I'm also doing a little bit of a tissue paper ruffle just folding that tissue paper down there. The trick is to use double-sided tape and not glue because this does not work well with glue. So I've got my big, big layering background. I've kind of, I've almost made my own pattern paper background, I guess. And I made sure to combine papers that went well together color-wise. So you've got the, the clocks, the multicolored, um, pattern paper there was where I drew most of the colors from and wood grain is always a bit of a neutral for me um, but because I had that busy busy background I felt like I needed to mat my photo with a white outline I guess you could say uh, you could always print your photo that way but alas I did not and so I did the next big best thing which was just sticking it on a bit of loose white cardstock that I had floating around I'm then using this paper which again is another multicolored I really struggle with the multicolored papers do you let me know your thoughts on that in the uh, comments section because I I don't struggle with with multicolored when they're in the same color family so if it's all different blues or aquas or greens it's a bit easier but when they're quite different colors so pink yellow aqua um, dark blue kind of a greeny color navy there's there's a lot of colors to play with and I think it's then that I start to get a little bit overwhelmed and go Mah! and don't really know how to use the papers I'm I added a doily from my stash um, and I just felt like I wanted a little bit more texture and this layout I put my title down and I end up completely changing it which you'll see and I purposely left it in because I wanted to explain my reasoning for moving it which you'll see in a moment I'm trying to use up some bits and pieces like I said I've got these rub-ons that I'm determined to get used and I wanted to use this better together because I was going to call it originally breakfast time uh, because this is what our breakfasts look like the bunnies love to hang under Archie's high chair because they know there's a good good chance that something will be dropped this I was very because I think because I felt so uneasy about using multicolored pattern paper background I was second guessing myself and I think it's it's okay to have layouts like that because it shows that you're kind of challenging yourself in a creative way as frustrating as it may be at the time it's I find it really interesting to look back on process videos that I know that when I was making this layout I was saying some not very kind things about this page in my head 
um, because I was getting frustrated with where things should go. Um, but it's nice to kind of look back and, and see the, the ups and downs of where I was during the layout. I That better together down the bottom there, it was really annoying me that it looked so squished. And I really wanted to use this little pink bunny from um, a Paige Evans collection. And I couldn't quite fit it in because if I put it right down the bottom uh, underneath that R in together, it looked like the bunny was hanging out with the my buns a little bit too much and it looked even more squished than it does already. And then I just went a little word crazy and I got all the words. So this is a rubber piece um, that I'm sticking down here and it was at this point where I thought, hang on, this, it's just, it's not working for me. I also grabbed some, um, a whole lot of hearts from my stash, a lot of hearts. Uh, and I was trying to use them up because I think because they're so little and now they're loose, they're not in packaging, I'm, they're getting lost. And so when I've got a few that are in they might be different materials, but so there's some chipboard, there's some rubber, there's some glittery ones, but they're in a similar color palette or colors that go well together. I'd rather use them together uh, and know that I can, I can do something decent with them rather than them hiding down the bottom of my stash and then only having one of them left. So then I decided to add some little uh, aquary type color hearts just to tie in some of those cuckoo clocks in the background paper. And then I'm just adding more and more sprinkly bits and I'm realizing more and more that I'm not happy with how this page is going. So I decide to completely take off the title. Yep, it's gone. And then I have a bit of a crazy moment and I'm like, right, we're just going to paint. We're just we're just going to cover up a little bit of this craziness in the background. And even though, look, painting over things can't be my solution all the time, but I feel like in this moment it did help the layout. Um, I tried putting the title just straight onto the clock paper, and it was just it was too busy. It you couldn't actually tell what the word was comfortably and so I decided a little bit of white paint so you can still see the houses through it but it just kind of gives the the background a, a little bit more of a neutral jumping off spot for the title that's that's my reasoning anyway we can we can pretend to agree with that I just wanted to paint over some of those clocks so then I feel a lot better and I think that when I, I use a busy background paper, I think it's important to look at the white space on the rest of the page and just check that your eye does have somewhere to kind of just rest for a moment. Um, and the page has a little bit of breathing space. I know that sounds silly and very artsy fartsy you know you need to let the layout breathe but you do you, you, your eye gets a bit overwhelmed if the whole page is filled up with all the things as as often as I do do that and do want to do that uh, I think it's nice sometimes to just leave some empty space so then I added a couple of labels down the bottom here and I got my little bunny in I squeezed him in and he doesn't look as squished anymore he looks like looks like he actually belongs there and then I was trying to figure out if I needed more things and of course more little sparkly hearts. Um, I do get questions about these a lot. I just punch them out using a Fiskars handheld punch and an older Martha Stewart heart punch as well. And then I thought, hey, there's not enough words on this page. Let's add all the words. So I grab my roller stamp and I just, I just start adding them and I I could have stopped before adding these, but I, I like the way they look. Um, but I do sometimes go a little over the top with the roller stamps. It's just because it's so fun and quick and easy and you just stamp, stamp, stamp. It just, it's very satisfying to stamp onto a layout. 
and then the page is done. I was tempted to do a doodly border, but I didn't want to add any more busyness. I thought I'd rein it in. Um, but yeah, so I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and New Year. I took a little break for two weeks. Um, let me know in the comments what you, if you celebrated Christmas, what you did or New Year or any other holidays that you may have celebrated in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.